Good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the um, invitation, the opportunity to make a presentation on the uh, Cancer Instance and Five Continent series um, of books published by International Energy Research and Cancer. But because I know that um, evolution of drug therapy is presumably um, uh, targeting the uh, clinical community, then I want to try to, the clinical community, which under some circumstances is not quite as interested in cancer registration as the epidemiology world. I want to focus on my own personal experiences as a way, hopefully, of trying to persuade more clinicians to become involved in cancer registration research. So the my introduction to cancer um, registration and cancer CI5 was through the um, founding conference of the APOCP, uh, where we um, timed our conference to um, to follow immediately after the International Association of Cancer Registries meeting in Kongen. And because of this, we were able to entice a very large number of individuals involved in cancer registration to our organization meeting. Next to me on the left, I'm sitting in the middle there. On the left is Max Parkin, who was for many years the leader of the cancer registry uh, world. Um, and we have in the audience, we have people from, from China, from Japan, from, uh, from most of the countries of Asia. Um, and I just want to focus on the attention, focus attention on the idea that in the cancer registry world in particular, it's very, very important that individuals play roles. Advocacy and action definitely means people, people power in this world. And unfortunately, one of the um, uh, our contributors, uh, Yasmin Burgui, um, died very soon after this and her registry then died with her. Um, we have another individual from uh, Hanoi, from Van, who, when she retired or when she was headhunted to um, join another uh, organization in Vietnam, her registry also um, came to a, an end for a long period of time. So it's an area where individuals matter a great deal. Next slide, please. So the first um, task of the Asian Pacific Organization was to pr pr provide a, um, a, a supplement um, for the to cover the um, uh, the cancer incidents um, uh, cancer registration in Asia, which was organized by Max Parkin. And because of on the strength of publication of this uh, um, uh, supplement, we uh, were awarded the um, title of one of the official registries of the International Association of Cancer Registries, Green Bar, a green ball you can see. And ten years later, we. Um, provided another an update um, with many um, new registries included in the Asian Pacific area. So that is my my major um, involvement. Next slide, please. And now I want to go on to the Cancer Incidents Five Continent series itself, published by the International Agency of Research and Cancer, which is part of the World Health Organization, set up prim set up to um, provide the cancer uh, uh, research world with a number of um, aids, including the cancer incident five continents, first in 1965, and the last one just this year. Um, so one to 12, you can see the uh, number of 32 registries from 29 countries in 1965, and now 455 registries in 70 countries. In each case, chapters included Introduction, the registration techniques, classification and coding, of course, the different histological groups, squamous cell, adenocarcinoma, small cell, lung cell, uh, um, a large cell, for example, in the lung, data comparability and quality processing, and of course, the age standardization, which is necessary in order to allow comparability between societies with different population pyramids. The most important point is that the emphasis is on accuracy, is on quality and comparability to allow registry data from different parts of the world to be compared. The tables that are included in each of the volumes um, provide population pyramids and sex and age specific and summary incident tables by each of the populations by their site. So looking at lung cancer, esophageal cancer, et cetera, world, age standardized rates, 
and cumulative rates for age in total 70 and by histological type, age standardized incidence rates for microscopically verified cases by histological type, as they say, for armor cell and the cosmic we return to this. And indices of data quality, whether they um, the cases were microscopically verified or whether they were only found by testification. So these, this is a very, very basic introduction. Next slide, please. And when I first started to become involved, then this was the situation for cancer registries, the high quality cancer registries, which were acceptable for publication in cancer in five continents. And as you can see in Asia, we have a number of registries in Southwest Asia, um, Israel, Oman, uh, Kuwait, we also have um, a, a number in Asia, um, one only, uh, one registry in um, in Pakistan, and numbers of others in a few countries of Asia, which were then included. Of course, we had many countries in um, Europe, primarily in Scandinavia, etc., in Northern Europe, where coverage was total, but for most of the um, Asian and many of the European uh, countries, then they either there was only a single registry or multiple registries. Next slide shows the same situation after five years, Kurada. And we see that in some countries we have increase in number, in some countries decrease. We have um, in Thailand, I was involved in one registry, Kongen, which um, was no longer acceptable because the pathological confirmation was not possible because many of the liver cancers that they were registering were, of course, at late stage, and therefore no um, um, bi biopsy was taken. So there was a decrease of, overall um, in the uh, number nine because of histopathological confirmation issues. Number 10, next slide, please. Next slide. Um, uh, so uh, basically increase um, across, but with many, with a number of countries like, for example, Vietnam dropping out, the, all of the time we are seeing that we're having general increase in numbers in the countries that are included. But um, this is uh, unfortunately, for example, in the uh, case for the Russian Federation, all of this period of time, only St. Petersburg was accepted for inclusion. Next slide, please. In um, uh, the 2008 to 2012 series, unfortunately, three of the major countries, um, that is um, uh, Sweden, um, Finland, and Singapore, were no longer no longer provided data because of confidentiality issues. They were concerned about privacy for the cancer cases. Um, unfortunately, um, this, um, this this was a problem for a period of time. Um, you can see here inserted, we have you know, the uh, Globocan. We also have Globocan in IR, which is research, which is responsible for providing estimates of uh, cancer. And you can see here the estimates for Russian Federation of the top here, male and female, mostly um, basically we're talking about lung cancer um, and breast cancer in female. You can see that within the four registries within Russia, which were then Russian Federation, which were then. Then we have slight differences, lung as number one, but whereas colorectal was number one, number two in Ar Arkhangelsk, skin Chelyabinsky was uh, prostate cancer. And of course, you have the reason, the rationale for having these individual registries is that we can pick up on changes or, or variation within countries. And in countries like Thailand, that's very, very important because it, northeast is very uh, is prevalent uh, liver cancer in the north, um, lung cancer in the south. So you have, of course, different ethnic groups which have different um, risk factors, and this um, translates into different uh, cancer incidences. So the last next slide, please. The uh, next. Um, shows the uh, situation now. This um, uh, the data for 2013, 2018 have just become available, and as you can see, that we have back our, um, our Scandinavian countries, Sweden and uh, Finland, and we also have Singapore back because the confidentiality confidentially, uh, confidentially issues have been resolved. But unfortunately, very many countries which were previously included, like Oman, like Saudi Arabia, like um, uh, Jordan, like uh, um, um, 
the a couple of countries like um, for example, Serbia, uh, Slovakia um, in in Eastern Europe, and many of the countries of Southeast Asia have dropped out because of difficulties in persuading the powers that be to provide the necessary finance. So that's the the situation that I want to stress is that we need to provide a rationale for more support for cancer registries. And I think that the best way for us to do to go about doing that is to provide not just cancer incidents and cancer mortality data, but also provide the ability for registries to contribute to clinical research, to um, their prognostic uh, factors. And that means that we will have more clinical involvement and hopefully that will provide more financial support for ongoing registration with many new uh, new. Uh, factors to be taken into account. Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, so um, in the Russian regions now, we have, um, luckily, we have now an increase to, um, I think, to one, two, one, two, three, four, five, 10 or 11, mostly in the northeast, um, the, the northwest, northwestern part of Russia. Um, and um, we can see that, um, as I say, St. Petersburg was present in the first in five or, or four of the issues, but then dropped out and was replaced by others. We have now our Kangilks and Samara, uh, Samara, which are uh, continuing. So we hope that in the future, there will be more and more Russian regions which will be represented in CI5. The comparability, comparability and the completeness of data have been confirmed, as you can see from the publications here from um, Anton uh, Bachak's group. Next slide, please. So what I want to basically emphasize is that, of course, IARC um, and um, its association with the uh, Global uh, Initiative for Cancer Registry Development, they are trying to focus on the areas where they do not have um, good registry at the moment. So therefore, we have um, new hubs which have been set up the Izmir hub in Turkey and the Mumbai hub in India, which are hopefully going to um, support development of cancer registries in uh, Southeast Asia and Central and um, Central and South, South Asia, where they are relatively weak. There are a number of countries which have decided to make play an active role, including Japan, Korea, China, Japan, uh, Thailand, Iran, setting up collaborating centers with IARC in order to be able to provide training courses, et cetera. But I also want to focus on the Asian National Cancer Center Alliance and the Asian Pacific Organization for Cancer Prevention, which now has an NGO set up in Kyrgyzstan. And we hope from using this as a base, we will try to also um, contribute to development of cancer registration in the future, focusing primarily on the clinical epidemiology. Next slide, please. So we um, we want to focus, for example, on lung, lung cancer. Um, here we have uh, the uh, map of the um, incidences of lung cancer from Globocan, the other, the guesstimates, and that's why you have um, uh, figures for countries which are not included in CI5. Um, basically we have with lung cancer, um, Eastern Asia, Asia, um, and of course, the part of Europe, um, and um, a lot of the Soviet Union, uh, work Soviet Union countries are very prevalent. But what I want to focus on is that the data that we're getting from CI5, and here on the right-hand side, you can see um, data for Croatia, for Estonia, for Denmark, and for Sweden, for males and females. And you can see here, on the left-hand side, the female, the males, Croatians coming steeply down, Estonia also, Denmark, males. And you can see that there are this decrease, but also while this decrease is going on, there is a shift from the squamous cell carcinoma to adenocarcinoma. In the female cancer case, we have basically increase in all four, and we have a massive predominance of uh, squamous, uh, of adenocarcinoma, um, especially in the, in the most recent uh, registries. So we are seeing a, a decrease, presumably due to the um, effects for tobacco control, whereas we have in females an increase partly due to increased smoking, but probably also to other factors. 
We know, of course, that there are different genetic anomal anomalies or abnormalities in the different types of lung cancer, squamous or adenocarcinoma. And of course, this translates into different um, drug therapies which are being developed. And therefore, it's very, very important that we make a distinction at the histopathology level. Um, I just wanted to show mortality data. This is from Norway at 70% of um, the uh, uh, cancer cases um, um, resulting in death, whereas in uh, Croatia it's 89 percent, Russia 86, Belarus 94. So you see that there is a difference, presumably due to um, either um, uh, early detection or some other difference in the um, in the clinical. Uh, treatment available, the prognostic factors. We know, of course, that lung cancer is going down at apart from in females. So we want to set up case cohorts using um, our bases in many, many different cancer registries so that we can accrue a large number of lung cancer cases within a relatively short period of time, looking in terms of the histopathological types, the molecular subtypes, and then looking at risk factors, the anthropomorphic factors, smoking exposure, occupation exposure, diet, screen history, treatment history, et cetera. And we want to set up these type of case control studies in multiple sites on multiple institutions in order to be able to provide much more information on the clinical outcome and the factors which, we, which are controlling prognosis. Next slide shows the same for, next slide shows gastric cancer. Basically, the outcome factors, so personal characters, medical history, etc. What I wanted to emphasize here is that we have differences between the cardia and the antrum, um, and therefore, although all the cancers are adenocarcinomas, the risk factors are very different. One extra piece of information that we can glean from the work of IARC is the influence of screening. And here you can see the data on the right hand below. Korea and Japan have far better outcomes for lung cancer, or for, for gastric cancer, sorry, than the, uh, the vast majority of other countries in Asia. And, and this is because of the fact that um, they have very, very well organized and established screening programs, which allow the stage to be reduced and therefore the outcome to be improved. Last slide, please. Okay, so I basically wanted to, um, emphasize the use utility of local registration cent research centers. I was involved with one in Kongen for many years, and they established not only, of course, their cancer registration, for instance, and mortality, but also did many, many, um, established a cohort, and then um, conducted a number of uh, nested case code, cohort uh, control studies. But I basically want to focus on the idea of this center where both epidemiologists and clinicians can work together accepting or receiving training and funding from WHO, from United Nations, the NGO sponsors, et cetera, and providing the publications in um, the different areas of epidemiology, including epidemiology, clinical epidemiology, which will provide the information for the government to um, improve their or optimize their policy making and provide the financial support, which is necessary to bring down the burden of cancer. So we need both epidemiologists and clinicians involved at this local registration level. So I thank you very much for your attention and hope that you have a very successful meeting.